Hi, welcome. I'm so glad you decided to get one of my clay kits. And this is an instructional video that you're going to learn what to do with this clay kit. My name is Miss Gretchen Grunt, and we are going to learn how to make a couple of different types of bowls today. And before I get too much into that, let's talk about what's in your clay kit, okay? Now my head's gonna disappear because I'm just gonna get into work here. And you're just gonna see my hands working, okay? So what's gonna happen with your clay kit that you have here, you're going to transform your block of clay, which is, as you can see, it says white clay on there, even though it looks gray. Then we have Potter's glue in uh, another sandwich bag that's gooey and it's like milkshake and you're gonna learn what Potter's glue does for us. And then we also have the special glazes that are made just for painting the bowls that you're gonna make with this clay. You can't use any other kinds of paints because after these get painted and I fire them in the kiln at 2000 degrees, you see how shiny and colorful this is, this white piece of clay? This disc I made out of the same exact block of clay that you see here. Same clay, but look, it's white, right? And it's got all the colors on there, so it's gonna show you how awesome they're gonna look after they get fired in the kiln, and it looks like glass, right? So your bowls should be good for food as long as you don't have any cracks in them that food gets stuck into, okay? So this is like for real pottery you're making, okay? And you're also going to find a couple of paint brushes, okay? All of these items that you see here in your clay kit that you got from me are going to get returned into your box with your bowls that you make. And I'm going to get all these tools back so I could reuse them again with other students. Really important I get these back. Okay, thank you. Meanwhile, our tasks that first task that we need to do is we need to go into our homes and we need to find some supplies that I didn't give you because this is kind of the fun part about um, working in clay is that there are all kinds of tools that you need and a lot of my tools are just from the house, looking around the house. So the first tool you absolutely need to find is a fork. Now it doesn't have to be a plastic fork. It can just be regular fork that you guys eat off of. And if the clay gets on anything, it easily washes off. No problem. Another thing you need to get is a knife, a butter knife that's not too sharp. You don't need a sharp knife. You just need a nice sturdy um, metal um, knife, like a butter knife, so that we can cut our clay. And then a dull um, pencil is best, especially when um, the tip gets rounded out. I like it better. We're going to draw with this on the clay and it's better. It's not pointy. Okay. Other items that you might want to find around the house that you uh, might find fun to use is an old toothbrush. If you happen to have an old toothbrush, we're going to talk about that when we get to painting. And then anything that looks interesting with textures or if any of you are stampers, maybe you have some small stamps um, or maybe some toys laying around little plastic bat ring that I thought might be fun to impress in the clay. Just like I thought this little textured guy might be fun to impress in clay. And then also I got a piece of, um, of cactus skeleton, which I really love the texture of that. Okay. Um, other items you'll need too from your house is a nice damp rag because as you work, you're going to notice your hands are going to get a little muddy, dirty. So it's easy to wipe up, keep your area clean. And you're going to need some kind of cup to put some water in, because we're gonna need that for your paint brushes. And then find a bowl in your kitchen, one that's not too big. I would say that the, this one that I made my example in two days ago is about as big of a bowl as you want to find. This is more appropriate for the size of clay that you have to work with. So what we're gonna do with these is learn how to make our bowls with that, okay? So let's get into it. But before we make that bowl, we're gonna make the first simple, simple bowl, which is the pinch pot 
uh, bowl that you might have made. If you've ever taken a clay class, typically we all learn how to make a pinch pot bowl the very first thing we learn in, in, in pottery. And this is really traditional that everybody learns this first, okay? So what you're gonna do first is take your clay out of your bag. And remember, your clay is not gonna be gray when you get it back. It's gonna be white, okay? I know, this is, this is the hardest part for everybody to wrap their brains around, especially when you go to paint. But for now, we don't really need to worry about the color of the clay. We just need to know that this clay is nice and soft and workable. I can feel that it hasn't gotten dried out because it's been sealed up in the Ziploc bag. So if you ever take a break from your clay project, be sure to put your clay back in the bag and seal it up because you'll be amazed how quickly this dries. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is take your handy dandy knife that you got and you are gonna cut it more or less down the middle. It doesn't have to be perfectly down the middle. If it's a little off, that's okay. And you're just gonna cut your, your, your block of clay into two pieces, okay? One I'm going to set back into my bag so it doesn't start drying out on me, okay? And the other, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. First, we are gonna make a pinch pot bowl. And this is where I'd like to mention it doesn't look like a normal bowl, right? It kind of looks like kind of a sea life flower of some sort. This is where you all are gonna have your artistic license to use your own unique flair on the shape that you wanna make your pinch pot bowl. You are not um, required to make your bowl look exactly like mine. As a matter of fact, the second one I'm gonna make, this pinch pot I'm gonna make in front of you, it's gonna look different than this one. Just show you, there's endless possibilities. So we've got a cube. We now wanna make it into a ball of clay. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you've got a piece of fabric or like a pillowcase or even a wood cutting board, you can use that to work on, okay? I personally got a piece of wood and I put some fabric on it and now I've got a place I can work with my clay and it's really nice to work on. So um, I apologize, but that's another item you need to find when you go find all your other required um, tools like your knife and your fork, okay? So you've got your piece of fabric down, and again, if it gets dirty, it's all very washable, okay? Clay washes right off. Any of this stuff washes right off, even your clothes. If you get the paint on your clothes, it washes off, okay? So you see how I'm pounding this into a ball? And I'm being kind of patient about it, because I don't want to get too wrinkly. You see how it's getting wrinkly right here? I don't want to get too wrinkly with that. I would just want to um, get it to smooth out and so I just keep rotating it and pounding down any pointy areas that I see and now it's starting to feel really good it even softened up a little bit actually clay when it sits for a while it starts to um, harden when it sits on the shelf too long but if you start bouncing it around and giving it that shock it will come back to life, which is amazing to think that this ball of clay is alive, but it really is. So um, clay is very, 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 very fine um, dirt that if you are a geologist, you would know how, where to find it in the landscape. Um, I did not go find this clay. I bought it from a store to make sure that it was good quality clay, okay? Um, but there are local artists that do um, like to collect local clay, but I do not do that. My friends do. Okay. So anyhow, here we are back to our ball of clay to make our pinch pot bowl. And you are going to hold it in your palm like so. Take your thumbs and push a hole down inside. Kind of looks like a, the mouth, sort of a monster mouth here. Okay. And what you're going to do is just going to simply pinch a little bit and rotate and pinch a little bit and rotate and pinch a little bit and rotate pinch a little bit and rotate and keep doing that and you, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you keep your clay relatively thick you see how thick this is this, this pinch pot bowl I made two days ago and it, it's pretty thick here right 
um, got a little bit thin in some areas, but I really want to stay thicker because I want it to be able to hold its weight. I don't want it to start flopping on me, okay? So here I go, and I'm just pinching gently. Now when you pinch, be sure you allow area between your fingers for the clay. Because if you just take your clay and pinch it, getting your fingers squished together, my clay just totally fell apart. You don't want to get too thin with your clay. Okay, so when you go to pinch your clay, you make sure you stay aware of keeping clay in between your fingers as opposed to pinching all the way down. And I always say a good rule of thumb is like the thickness of the tip of your little finger. It's good thickness for clay. And that way it stays nice and sturdy and it doesn't start cracking. Now you can notice I just took my little balls of clay that I just ripped off of there. I'm going to put them back in their hole and fill it in and it just smooths right out. Okay. So here I go, pinch, twist, pinch, twist, all I go around, and I just keep getting a shape. Whatever shape feels good, there, again, there is no um, required shape to be the same as mine. Typically, we all kind of make our own shapes because our hands are all different shapes, even though they all look the same. But we all kind of make things differently, right? Just like we all like a different color. So we are shaping our bowl. And it's starting to get a little bit floppy where it kind of doesn't want to hold its, its shape. So I'm going to stop pinching it because I want it to stay thick. As soon as it gets too thin, it gets really floppy. Um, it gets to be kind of annoying because then you have something that doesn't want to hold up its shape. Okay. If it does that, you could let it sit out for a few minutes and let it um, like in five minute intervals, check it and see if it's hardened up enough to where it wants to hold its shape so you don't feel frustrated with it, okay? So another thing that happens a lot with clay is you can see there are, are cracks and stuff. Don't worry about too much about the cracks and the, the surface area like this until we're all finished. When we're all finished, I'll show you how to smooth it out, okay? So here we go, got, got our shape. And let's see, what's a good shape I should make my bowl in? Just like you should be thinking about what shape you might want to make your pinch pot bowl into. And obviously you realize why it's called a pinch pot. Uh, because we pinch it to shape it into a bowl. And again, if this doesn't have any cracks in it, when you get it back home, um, after I fire it, this will be good for ice cream. Uh, I love ice cream. Or um, maybe if you're more of a health food nut, you want to put your favorite soup in it, okay? So here I am, got my bowl. I was just kind of smoothing on the inside here a little bit just uh, to get the walls a little bit more vertical. For some reason that feels good to me, but no, no need for you to do that. Your bowl could even be more open if you want it to be. But I'm thinking of a shape. I'm going to do the classic... Um, heart shape. So I'm just taking my my walls of my bowl and I'm just going to start shaping this. And you're going to find it's really forgiving. Okay, look, it's already starting to look like a heart. And I just give it a little pinch down here and I can have a heart bowl. And you decide what shape you want to make yours. If you want it to be more organic and abstract like this, you can. And the way I did this is I just simply, just like you see here on where I did the point for the heart, I just simply made these pointy little rounded areas here, okay? So I'm happy with that pinch pot bowl. So simple, so quick, which is part of the reason this is the first project everybody learns. Real instant gratification, make you have fun, right? Now, I'm gonna address the cracks because I'm done making my um, heart bowl. I'm happy with this but I'm not happy with the cracks. Can we see the cracks well enough along here? I personally don't like cracks and I find that a lot of other people don't like cracks, okay? So I'm gonna get one of my brushes out of here and I'm going to dip into my slip or what I called potter's glue earlier, right? And I am going to just smooth it's like painting on wet clay, and that's all the slip is, is just watered down wet clay, okay? 
and I am simply, it's like putting on lotion and be careful how much of the slip you put on because it's watered down clay and if you add too much water onto your clay it will start falling apart and again you'll get frustrated because it's going to lose its shape. Okay, so don't put too much, just enough to where you see all the cracks you want to get rid of erase away with the slip as you paint it on. It's a really great way to smooth out your clay. Okay, so I would just go around and do this to the whole thing. Most important, if you've got any cracks on the inside of your bowl, be sure to smooth those out. And the, the slip of the paintbrush works so beautifully to smooth out clay. It's really satisfying. Especially if you're somebody like me who likes their clay smooth, which is not a requirement. It's just how I like it. Every artist has their own way they like things as you're learning in your art history class. And that's how I like my clay to be nice and smooth. Okay. So any little final adjustments you want to make with it before you let it harden. Once this hardens, dries, it's going to be take about two days for it to dry, just like you see here. And you can see the difference in the color. We've got dark gray and we got light gray. I know now, and look how I can hold this. Like right now, I cannot hold my heart with just two fingers like this, right? It's gonna, I'm gonna ruin its shape. So in two days, it's gonna be hard like this and then that's when you're gonna paint it, okay? Which we'll, we'll do, we'll show you how to paint this today. Okay, so my heart, I'm happy. Now I'm gonna set it someplace where I can just let it sit for two days, okay? So place it where you want for two days to harden up. So now I'm ready for my other block of clay. And this time we're gonna um, make a bowl within a bowl, okay? And what I mean by that is that you see that there is this light gray on the inside of this bowl here, this brown bowl. I'm going to slip this out because, again, I made this two days ago. And now I've got a bowl that the existing bowl held its shape while I made it and while it dried, making it super easy to make a bowl, okay? And what Native Americans like to call these existing bowls that they use to make more bowls from, they like to call them pookie bowls. P-U-K-I, pookie bowls. And pookie bowls um, are just make it so easy for you to make another bowl, right? Because back in the olden days when you couldn't just go to Walmart and buy your bowls, um, you had to make your own bowls, right? So Native Americans were making their own bowls. And the, uh, the Native Americans in our area that like to make um, uh, clay bowls and Oyas, which I should get my friend's Oya that's here in my studio and show you what an Oya is. Can you see it all? Oh, it's so big. This is an Oya, okay? This is basically is what we would call Tupperware. This was Native American Tupperware and this was made by the Serrano Indians in our area. Um, they like to work in clay. So they would stuff it full of their collected seeds and then clog up the hole so the critters couldn't get into it. And there you go, Tupperware for their food, okay? So I'm gonna show you how that Oya was started by using a pookie bowl, okay? Today, I'm not gonna use this same bowl that I already had used. I'm going to use one that's a little smaller just to make our demonstration a little faster so you don't have to be sitting here forever because I want you to be making your own bowls quickly, okay? So here we go. We've got our block of clay and um, the, the first thing I'm going to do with this block of clay is I'm going to slice about like so thick and cut. I always like to say I'm cutting my bacon, right? Mm, everybody likes bacon. And with this slice I just got a bacon, I'm going to squeeze it in my hand. And you see how now it's more turning into a sausage shape? And get it into a sausage shape, because what we are going to do is do coil building, 
which is how Native Americans, the Serrano Native Americans like to make um, their bowls and their ollas. So I'm going to roll, and you know what? I'm gonna get my fabric a little bit wet because I just know from experience if my fabric is totally dry and I go to roll my coil, um, I risk my coil getting too dry too fast and when I go to bend it to make my bowl, it's gonna break. So I'm getting a little bit of water onto my fabric, just to where it's damp, not too, too wet. You don't want it all shiny wet because then it'll make it really hard to do this, okay? And so I'm going to, move this a little closer so you can see better. I am going to roll my piece of sausage. It's now more of a hot dog shape, right? And for you, again, as an artist, you decide how much you want to roll this. The more I roll, the longer and thinner it's going to get. And what I'm going to be doing with this um, piece of clay is I am going to be putting it inside my bowl. I'm going to start down at the bottom center of my bowl. And I'm going to start coiling it around like a snake or a garden hose, like so. Okay, and you can now see why it's called a coil. It looks like a coiled up little snake, doesn't it? And that's what I'm going to keep doing in this bowl. As I go up the pookie bowl, I'm going to use the pookie bowl to hold the shape of my coils as I build up. Okay, but there's something really important we need to do in between these coils. I can't just do what I just did here and think this is going to stay together and not crack. Because what happens when clay dries, it shrinks. And when it shrinks, it pulls away from each other. Okay, these coils are gonna end up drying and getting a gap. So I need to make it so that these are strongly glued together, which is where our potter's glue is gonna come into place and our fork that we have, okay? So what I need to do here is I need to uncoil this because in between these coils, I need to texture and glue, okay? And what I simply mean by that is just take your coil and just scratch it. And think of your clay as like um, uh, Velcro. You're trying to make texture. Velcro was smooth, it would not stick together. So we wanna make it nice and textured like Velcro. We get, and I'm just gonna do the whole coil here on this edge, okay? Just get it all scratched up. Who cares if it looks ugly? Nobody's gonna see this, because what we're gonna do is then put some slip or potter's glue. They, they, those names interchange with this stuff. So sorry if I keep confusing you by using both the names, but with our potter's glue, we just brush it on. And then I'm going to coil inwards where I just textured, but look, I just ran into a smooth spot here on my coil, right? I don't want to go smooth the texture. I want all this to be textured and gluey, okay? And I'm only holding this up right here so you can see what I'm doing. It's going to be hard to, to show you what I'm doing when it's in the bowl. So I just really want to stress how important it is to texture. And this won't be as cumbersome for you because you'll be doing this inside your bowl, okay, instead of outside your bowl. And glue, okay, so texture, glue. Texture, glue. Now I've got some nice texture going along here. I can just keep going around and around. And I might as well go to the full length here because I know I'm going to run into more of that in my coil here. And in between the texturing, you put the potter's glue, okay? because it's really gonna help bond. And we use potter's glue, which is the watered down clay, instead of just water, because if you just use plain water, it's gonna make your clay fall apart. The, the straight water, when you brush on clay, um, it dissolves the clay, it makes it start to fall apart, and then you'll get lots of cracks, okay? So here I go, pushing it together, pushing it together, pushing it together, and I've got the start of my first coil that I can put down inside my bowl and I'm going to put down the middle. You could put it on the on the side. It, it 
could do something very different. You could actually make a bunch of coils separate like this. One coil, a se second separate coil, third separate coil, and you could have those part of your design in your bowl. But I'm going to keep it real simple here. Put it at the bottom of my pookie bowl. And now you've got a bunch of seams that I can see, right? Or between the coils. And I don't want to see that in the inside, mostly because I want to make this food safe so I can eat lots of ice cream out of it, okay? So I'm going to take my butter knife and get in here in between the coils and smooth it out, okay? If it's a little odd using the butter knife to do this, by golly, go ahead and use your fingers, okay? I do typically use my fingers just because I feel like I have a lot more control with my hands than with the butter knife or a tool, okay? I love to get dirty, as you see with my fingers are nice and dirty. So get dirty because you know what? Got a damp cloth. When you're done, it just wipes right off. Easy, okay? So... I'm going to keep building my coils like this inside my pookie bowl uh, around and around and around and around I go until I run out of clay or if like what I did with this bowl that I made two days ago, I saved a little bit of my clay and I made a little butterfly and put it on the edge of my bowl to make it unique. Okay, and then you can see inside my bowl. I made some patterns, right? And that I simply have used one, my dull pencil to first draw where this flower was going to burst inside the bowl. Then once I was happy with that drawing, I then went and used the end of my plastic knife and I just stamped, I just went bloop, 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 and stamped into the bowl to make a design. So if you don't like to draw and rather stamp, you can do that, which is the same idea with the other items I had found. I can easily use those for texturing once I am finished making my bowl. I can make some textures with it. If I don't like it, I can simply just smooth it out, okay? And if it needs a little bit of more the potter's glue or slip to smooth it out, you can always do that too. But just caution you not to get it too wet because it'll start cracking apart, okay? And the same goes for any other items that you found that you might like. Like with my bat ring, I can stamp, stamp into the bowl. I don't know if you can see that. It's a pretty delicate stamp that I just did. Let's see if this one will show up better. I can see it really well with my bear, with my eyes here, but in the camera it's a little harder to see. Okay, and then the same went for my my cactus um, of texturing. If you want to do any texturing, if you don't want to do any texturing, you just want to leave it. You can do that too. Just like I had left this with no texture. It's just just a form, no no little stamping. Okay, so you keep building around and around. Now I'm going to do this one more time just so you can see how it goes. I cut my piece of bacon, yum, yum, yum. I turn it into a piece of sausage by squeezing it in my hands as I spin it around, 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 around. And I roll it on my dampened fabric. And I'm leaving my coils um, at least as thick as the, the tip of my small finger so that these coils won't get too small because what happened here my coils were pretty thick, but I went smush, smush, smush to get this all smoothed out, right? And when I was doing that, I was making my clay thinner, okay? We don't want to go too thin. It's always better to have it be too thick. Too thick means it's going to be sturdy. Too thin means it is going to um, uh, start cracking, okay? So don't go too thin, especially when you're letting them dry. Don't want them to dry too thin because then they'll start cracking, okay? So I've got another coil. I'm going to take my fork, and if they break, who cares? Uh, I can just glue it on with my texture, texture glue. So I'm going to go texture on one side, texture on the second side. Then I get my brush for my potter's glue, right? That's in my little 
sandwich bag that I gave you. Put lots of that on there. Also, I'm going to need to texture around the edge where of my already made disc here. And I'm going to get my textured glued edge along that edge. And just put um, the, the potter's glue on one side that you're gluing together as opposed to both. Otherwise it'll get too wet. And then I just start mushing it in like so. Once I kind of get it where I want it, then I'm going to smooth it really good. You really want these cracks on the inside to disappear. If they don't disappear when they dry, it's going to crack apart. And then I won't be able to eat my ice cream out of it. It'll just have to be a knick-knack bowl for stuff instead of food. Because we don't want to eat out of dishes that are cracked. I guess some weird stuff grows in the crack and it makes our food taste nasty. Okay, and then again, I'm going to texture with my fork around that edge, get my coil that it fell apart, which who cares, because I can just stick it right back on. I already textured, I already glued. Got one part on there. I'm gonna get my other one that broke off. So forgiving, so don't feel like if your clay breaks, it's the end of the world because it's actually so forgiving to be able to just stick it all back together again, okay? And I, I need to make more coil, but let me stick these on first. And see, I'm making those, that clay really come together so there's no gaps, no lines, no cracks, all smooth. And I'm keeping my coils pretty thick. My coils are basically like as thick as my ring finger. Um, I, I like sturdy bowls and I want it to last a long time. So that's nice and thick. It'll be nice and sturdy. Okay. And then I need to make another coil. Let's do, uh, where'd my knife go? Here it is. Cut this sausage. La 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 la. I'm going to do two at once so I go really fast. Because I really don't want to take up all your time. And I'm going to save a little piece of clay. Roll, roll, roll. And the, and the finesse of rolling a coil without it all breaking and falling apart is just even pressure. And not too much pressure because otherwise you'll smash it. Right? No smashies. Just roll it. Get Oh, you know what? I didn't texture here. I got a texture around here. Texture, 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 texture. I already got glue on this edge, so I don't need to put more glue. I'm going to start where I had a gap right here. See how I had a gap right there? So I'm going to put that the fill in that gap. And around and around I go. Hey, I made it all the way around this time. Sweet. Okay. And push it together and get that crack all, get it all put together. Really sturdy, no cracks. Okay. There we have it. Okay. Um, I'm going to spare you on doing the last coil just because it's getting to be a little long, you guys watching me. And I know you're biting at the bit to get dirty with your clay. So let me move along here. So we'll pretend I use all my clay, except I saved the little peas because I was going to embellish with a little something like I did with my butterfly, which was simply to make this butterfly. What I did is I took my clay, two pieces, kind of rolled into a ball, which you can roll on the table around and around and around, or you can roll in your hands, around and around and around. And your hands is a little easier because in the middle of our palm is round, and when you roll, it just gets nice and round, okay? And then I uh, have an extra little piece of clay and make a little mini coil for the butterfly's body. And I took my balls of clay and I just did a little bit of shaping with them to make them look more like wings. 
real easy. Again, remember, keep your clay thicker, okay? Don't smash it to where, you know, your fingers are touching and there's no clay in between because you just you now smashed your clay apart. And again, when I go to glue this butterfly together, what do I do? Texture, texture, glue. So texture, 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 all the places I'm going to glue together, the two wings, and glue. And I just put the glue on the wings and stick it on the body. And voila. And the best part about when you keep your clay nice and thick like this, it already holds its shape really quick. You don't have to go set this down and let it wait 5, 10, 15 minutes before it's hard enough to hold its shape. Okay. But if you do have that issue where things get too thin, um, then let it sit. And if you need any newspaper to help hold it um, in, in the position you want it, you can. Okay. And then I'm going to take my, my butterfly. Oh, and before I do that, though, I need to smooth out this bowl. And my damp rag could be a really great way to smooth out this bowl as well. I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to smooth, smooth, smooth. You see how smooth that's getting? Really smooth. Getting rid of any cracks. And I, I made a flat part of the towel. So I just smooth it on in really easily. Smooth my edge here, top edge. Okay, and then if I want, I can either leave this separate. So if you have extra clay and you decide to make um, little creatures, uh, just leave them separate if you want to. You don't necessarily have to glue them onto your bowl. Um, I just think it makes it a little bit more whimsical. And I personally make a lot of bowls, so I'm always trying to think of new ideas. So texture, texture, glue. And now I've got a butterfly ball. Squish it down so it doesn't want to go flying off later. It kind of looks more like a bird. I don't think so big. <laughs> so this is going to sit in here for a couple days, just like my heart bowl is going to sit for a couple days. And then once it turns into a, um, a light gray, we now know it's ready to be painted, okay? One other thing I'd like to say, though, when it comes to painting the bowl that you take out of your pookie bowl, is that you may end up with sharp edges. I don't know if you can see this, but on this edge of this bowl, me feeling this is really sharp, okay? And I don't want that to be that sharp when it's finished, because when I go to use it to eat my ice cream out of it, I'm going to cut myself, okay? I don't want to cut myself. So I'm going to take my rag, especially the part that has that wet clay on there, and I'm going to smooth that edge down by just simply rubbing this damp rag on that edge and just a little bit of rubbing and suddenly that edge starts to dissolve because of the damp rag. And now when I feel my finger on it, I'm like, oh, now it feels rounded. Okay, now I don't have to risk cutting myself with my bowl later as I use it. Okay, and a lot of times that happens when we use pookie bowls because in this, when I made it two days ago, I really mushed this last coil around the edge a lot and it just ended up pushing against the side of the pookie bowl and made a sharp edge. Okay, and if you need to get your towel just a little bit more damp, but make sure you have a little bit of clay in that rag because you don't want water water. Water is going to make your, your clay fall apart and crack. Okay, and I do have a crack on my bowl right here. See this crack right here? I'm going to try to mend that before I start painting it. Okay, so I'm going to rub my, my damp rag on there. And I'm going to just take a little bit of my slip and fill it in. And we'll see if that gets rid of that crack, if that was enough. Right now, it doesn't look like it has a crack anymore. But when it dries, it could show up a crack again. And if it does, then I would dampen it with my rag again. And I would put another coat of the slip on it and get it get it sealed. Okay? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry too much about it, though. Okay, so since I just... Um, showed you how to fix that one. I'm going to put that one aside and let it dry before I start painting. And I'm actually going to use 
my pinch pot bowl from two days ago as my example of how to paint your um, your pottery okay so you're going to get your little container of glaze which I hope you left in its Ziploc bag until you went to use it because again this glaze has clay in it dries out really fast okay and that's why I put it in Ziploc bags and you take it out when you're ready for it and then you can see also what the colors look like when they come out right but you are not limited to the colors I gave you okay for those of you who love making your own colors know that you can do that okay so what if I want a pink I didn't give you a pink this is a fiery red so you're gonna take your fiery red and your white and you're going to make your own colors and this is where you might want to get a separate plate from your cupboard in the kitchen or you can use this to mix your colors so when you mix two colors together I'm going to make pink, which is white and red, right? So lots of the white, the light color, and just a little bit of the dark color, which is the red. And you mix, mix, mix. And I mix a little bit of red. And if I find that that's not pink enough for me, then I can always go back to the red and get a little bit more and mix it and see if that gets it a bright enough pink for me, which I'm looking at that going, yeah, I like that. I like that pink better, okay? And that's why we always mix just a little bit of the um, darker color into lots of the lighter color because then you're gonna um, end up making the color exactly how you want it as opposed to a big blob of a color you don't want as we've all have done before in the past when they play with colors okay so when we go to paint on our our now what we call bone dry um, pottery bowls we have to be aware that they're not fired yet in the kiln all right and they haven't turned white like this is going to be white just like this disc this disc I made was made out of the same clay Okay, it's really white that you're painting on. It looks gray now, but it's really white clay you're painting on. So if you want white, just don't paint it, okay? And it'll come out shiny white because I'm going to put this magical clear coat on it to make it shiny. But if you want lots of color, like my lovely pink I just made, I'm pretty sure we all know how to use a paintbrush. But the important thing about when you paint is I painted some pink there. I'm not going to go back and paint again a second coat while it's wet. I want to let it dry, okay? So I'm going to go to a new spot and I'm going to start covering up the gray with my pink, okay? The reason I don't go back to where it's already painted and wet and shiny and start brush, 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 thinking I'm going to really get lots of pink on there is because when I brush, brush, brush like that, I'm scrubbing this clay that's really white, this white, it's going to be a white bowl, right? That white clay is going to start mixing into my paintbrush, and now I'm going to be mixing more white into my pink I just made when I want it to be bright, okay? So I'm going to put it on pretty thick. You see I really loaded that brush, and when I put it on, let's go to a new spot, and we just get it on there and not worry about brushing it over and over and over let it dry to where it's not shiny anymore then if you want more pink go back to that spot and add more pink okay but for now I think I'm about done with my pink let's get a little bit more on this edge okay we all know how to paint with paint brushes we can either you know brush it on or we can do polka dots with our brush right and it's not very good polka dots. Let's do better ones. How about this? And actually, sometimes when you use the other end of your paintbrush, the back end, sometimes those make way better polka dots. Okay? So you paint away on your form. And oh, the paint, the uh, toothbrush that I had you get, that is really fun. 
in that you can, let's get a color you're really going to be able to see. I'm going to get some black here. I'm going to scoop up some of this black. Mix, mix, mix. And now I pull back on the bristle. And when I pull back on the bristle, see I'm pulling back here? I'm going to let it fly like that. Okay, but I got to get some more paint on there because I just made it all fly a little off of there. And I'm going to spray some pollen on my flower. Okay, really fun texture to do with your, your toothbrush. And if you start layering colors, like I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to go and layer some other colors on there. Get my brush, get some blue. And when you start to layer colors, you're not quite sure how the colors are going to come out. And this um, guy here that I made, I really layered up my colors and see how they vary in reds and purples and turquoise and blues. Um, I just really layered my colors up and let it, um, then after it gets fired, after you get it back, it'll be a little bit more of a surprise of what your, your colors did. Okay. And typically what happens, like my black, if I put black on top of my lighter colors, which are any of the other colors, right? Black is the darkest. It'll typically cover it up completely. You don't want it to cover up completely. Then um, don't put a darker color on top of a light color. But if you keep putting, you know, like if I took my toothbrush again, cleaned it off, got some more of my yellow, and I want some more splashing with the pollen. Oh, now I have no idea really what that's going to look like after it gets fired. Layering colors gets really interesting. Okay. Now, if you turned out that you're like, oh, I changed my mind. I didn't want to have all that goop at the bottom like that. You, you can't erase. You can go in there with your damp cloth. And you can't erase um, and, and cover it up with other colors. But, you know, let it happen. Don't be... Don't be too worried about it. Have fun with this, right? This is all about being creative and uh, enjoying working with clay. So I thank you very much. And I really enjoy, I'm um, going to enjoy seeing what you all make. And uh, I'm going to fire it in the kiln. And uh, everything you give to me is going to look like this when you give it to me. But when you get it back, it's going to look all shiny and colorful. And um, it's going to be fired at almost 2,000 degrees to turn your clay and glaze into basically glass, which is called vitrify. I'm going to vitrify your clay bowls in the kiln. Okay, thank you and looking forward to seeing it all.